We recently did a video all about random things Germans do that simply make a lot of sense that we had never seen in the US, but there are also some things we've noticed Germans do that, well, don't make a lot of sense. <laughs> And welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie and along with my wife Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. In our last video on this theme, we talked about the Instagram and TikTok trend where people post videos of things they do or see in specific places that seem to simply just make a lot of logical sense that may be unique to that one place. Now, of course, nowhere is perfect and there may always be room for a little bit of improvement no matter what country we are talking about. So along with those things we talked about in our other video that Germans do that just simply make a lot of sense, there are also things Germans do that don't make a lot of sense. And that is exactly what we are gonna talk about today in our video. Germany is grand, but this, I just don't understand. First, as always, I have to say that we are originally from a state in the southern US called Oklahoma and now live in the southwestern German state of rheinland pfalz And that both of these places have their own unique subcultures that may not be representative of the two countries as a whole. Therefore, let me know your individual experiences with these things in the comments below and where you are from. Also, if you are from a different country than these two, we wanna hear about what these things are like where you live. And let's just remember, just because one place does something one way and another place does something in another way doesn't always mean there are rights and wrongs. Maybe just simply different ways of doing things. <laughs> Go into any fast food restaurant in Germany, order fries, and they'll ask you whether you want ketchup or mayo on the side. However, when you get your order, you'll realize they literally give you one tiny packet of sauce that in no way will be enough for all of your fries. Now, in the US, we use the same tiny packages, and this could happen to you as well, but you'll go up to the counter and simply ask for more, and they will often hand you a massive handful of packets for free. In Germany, on the other hand, for whatever reason, the same American fast food companies, which are so generous in the US, have decided to be all stingy in their foreign markets because they will normally charge you something like 30 cents for every packet you want beyond the first one included with your meal. As a principled man, I refuse to pay 30 cents for a packet of mayo that I normally would get for free in the US, so I am typically left rationing out the thimble of mayo for my fries and this just doesn't make sense. So is charging for extra sauce packets something that Germans do that doesn't make sense or something that American corporations do that don't make sense? Well, for this video, I'm going to pin the blame on the Germans. Oh, and most Americans would say mayo on fries is also something that Germans do that don't make sense, but I am completely sold on this now, but quote Weiss, you've just gone too far. <laughs> Overall, as anyone will tell you, especially Germans, driving in Germany overall is a much more pleasant experience than driving in the US. German driving school is significantly more rigorous than US driving school, and as stereotypes of Germans would have you expect, they are very good about following all of the rules and safety regulations. So I will 100% own that driving in Germany does make so much more sense than in the US. However, there is one aspect to driving in Germany that doesn't make sense to me, and that is the rules that intersections without stoplights. For example, we have a road in town that looks like this. You have a priority road that turns at a 90 degree angle and two non-priority roads that feed into the main road. Of course, cars driving on the priority road always have priority to go through this quasi intersection and that makes sense. Once the priority road is clear though, who has right of way from the non-priority road to go first? Well, according to US driving laws, the car that arrives to the intersection first would have the right of way. But in Germany, it is always the car on the right before left. And I do not understand this rule at all. In the US, it just seems fair if you got there first, 
you go next. And it works out well. But I can't tell you how many times it has happened in Germany where traffic gets backed up in the lane on the left as they must wait for the traffic on the right to clear. But cars just keep coming and coming. And then sometimes cars notice that this is happening. So they cut across the parking lot that we are sitting next to so they can get in the lane on the right to skip the slowed back up patiently waiting lane. And for the Germans that will comment, this makes more sense because what happens if cars arrive at the same time and it isn't clear who was first? Well, in that case, the obvious solution is just to hop out of your car and duel over who gets to go first. <laughs> As many of you know, one of the many reasons I wanted to move to Germany was to help with a lifelong goal of becoming bilingual. In school growing up, I had learned a little bit of Spanish and Latin, but it never really stuck. So I assumed that it was because I wasn't fully immersed in a language, so I thought that moving to Germany would help me do that. And it actually sounds like a lot of you are in the same boat because of the number of comments that I get of people saying they watch our videos to help practice their English. Well, I wanna tell you all from personal experience that you actually don't have to move to a different country to immerse yourselves in a foreign language, and instead you could actually use the sponsor of today's video, Cambly, to immerse yourself in English from the comfort of your own home. Cambly is an English learning platform where you get one-on-one -on -one lessons with native English speakers. 100% of Cambly's tutors are native English speakers from the US, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, etc. You can simply hop on Cambly's website or app and comfortably speak with any of their qualified tutors at any time. And I literally mean anytime because although you can sign up for lessons in advance, you don't have to and can always just jump on and see who is available at that moment to work with you. When I am out and about speaking German, I have realized how big the differences often are and how Germans actually speak versus what I was taught in class or from a book. English, of course, is the same way. And what I love about Cambly is that you will be able to actually receive feedback in real time from native speakers who can help you sound more natural when you speak. Use our promo code PASSPORT Two, and Cambly will give you a huge 50% discount on their annual subscriptions in addition to a free 10 minute trial lesson so you can check it out for yourself. <laughs> Real quick guys, I wanna take a moment to thank all of our patrons over on Patreon for supporting our channel. What you guys do is such a huge support to our channel and I truly want you to know how much I appreciate it. Also, if all of you watching would take a moment to hit those like and subscribe buttons, it would mean a lot in supporting our channel. Now, let's take a look at a few quick things that don't make sense in Germany. In Germany, umfahren is the opposite of umfahren. Schaf oder nicht? Schaf, bitte. Uh. Ah. <laughs> Germany is infamous amongst foreigners living in Germany for their Sunday culture of everything being shut down. But I'm not going to include that on my list because let's be honest, this topic has already been discussed a thousand times before. But it goes beyond just Sundays in Germany and even on many holidays, there are lots of rules one must follow that we had never heard of before moving to Germany. For example, right before Easter this year, our weekly local newspaper printed this to remind everybody in our heavily Catholic area of the upcoming special rules on the holiday. Due to the law on the protection of Sundays and holidays of Rheinland Pfalz, the following events are prohibited during Holy Week and Easter. Public dance events are not allowed from 4 in the morning on Monday Thursday to 4 p.m. on Easter Sunday. Public gatherings, processions, and parades, unless they serve the practice of religion or do not correspond to the character of the holiday, as well as all public events and performances serving the entertainment, which do not fit the character character of the holiday, including music performances in restaurants and the operation of amusement arcades, are prohibited on Good Friday from 4 in the morning. Now, it can be and it is highly debated in parts of Germany as to what people should and shouldn't be allowed to do on holidays. However, even automated machines must get a day off on holidays. So to explain, let me tell you a little story. Last year it was Father's Day and in Germany, everything is shut down and everybody gets off work for this holiday. However, one thing that does still operate are gas stations, of course, and I just so happened to need to fill up my car on that day. While I was there, I thought, 
well, I can't do anything else today, so I'll go ahead and get my car washed while I'm here as well, because this station had an automatic car wash. However, when I asked the attendant for a car wash, he informed me that because it was a public holiday, the automatic car wash was not allowed to work. Now, I can understand if I was at a car wash business where actual people washed the car, and because it was a public holiday, they all had off from work, so nobody was there to wash a car, but Germany has gone so far as to even get give the machines a day off from work on public holidays, and I was not allowed to go through an automatic car wash. Now, okay, maybe you can make an argument that if something went wrong, then someone would have to leave their day off to come and fix the machine, and that would cause them to work or something like that, but automatic machines not being allowed to work on a holiday doesn't make sense to me. At nearly every German store, and in particular at German grocery stores, right inside the entrance, there will typically be little gates that will automatically swing open when you approach them, and they only open one way to let you in. If you try and go through these barriers the wrong way and to leave the store through them, they will set off a siren letting everybody know. Therefore, often the only way to get out of the store is to follow the maze of aisles and then exit through the checkout lines. However, once you arrive there, any checkout line not in use will have one of these swinging gates blocking you from leaving. Except these gates do not automatically swing open to let you buy, and you must leave through a checkout line where the cashier is checking people out and has open the gate for people to pass through after they have paid for their goods. So, if you can't tell, this isn't something that I'm used to, and I would say it is very rare if you ever see these types of gates in stores in the US at all. And I honestly don't understand the reason for them. Of course, there is the obvious argument that maybe these are to reduce theft as you must go through the checkout with your goods rather than sneaking out the entrance away from the employees. But as a comment pointed out recently in one of our videos, in Germany you can enter any store or supermarket with your personal backpack, then you take your backpack and you start stuffing it with what the products that you want. Then you go to the cashier to empty out the products that you have just stuffed moments ago. Nobody would call you a thief, and that is wonderful among the Germans. And I agree, that is great and something I would never do in the US and fear getting accused of stealing. But because of this, maybe there is a need for the gates in Germany because they trust you to do that, but not enough not to lock you in with gates in front of the exit. But when this really gets frustrating for me is when I go in a store, don't buy anything, and then am trapped because I can't go back out the way I came without setting off an alarm, but at the checkout line, there was a line of people that is hard to squeeze through because of the people waiting in line, and all of the unused lanes have gates blocking me from getting out, where in the US we don't have these gates and I have the freedom to easily leave the store if I choose. In Germany, I always do an awkward dance of trying to see if I could squeeze by the line or trying to see if there is a gate that I may be able to squeeze by. But then I always get worried that the checkout clerks think I'm trying to sneak out stealing something. Something. It would just be so much easier if I could just go in a shop, decide I don't want something, and just easily walk out. But maybe this is just a personal problem as a foreigner not used to this system, even after years of um, living in Germany. <laughs> After nearly three years of living in Germany, we have learned the many, many endearing qualities of Germans, and I really do mean that. We have loved getting to know Germans on a personal level and learning more about their cultural norms and how it influences the very general overarching personality of the country. However, you knew there was going to be a however, there is one aspect that we have uncovered of Germans that can drive us a little crazy sometimes, and that is their unwillingness to give up more information than the bare minimum of what you asked for. The best example of this that I could think of where I was just left wondering what was going on during a conversation with a German was when I was trying to get my first vaccination. I had heard that our local doctor had gotten a batch in and was taking appointments for people to come in and get the jab. I called the office and my conversation went like this. Hi, I'm Donnie and I was wondering if you had gotten the COVID vaccine in yet? Yes. Oh, great. Do you have appointments to receive it? Yes. Okay. May I make an appointment? Yes! And this wasn't a language barrier thing or anything because I was speaking in German the whole time. But where in the US I would have expected the conversation to go a little bit more like this. Hi, I'm Donnie and I was wondering if you had gotten the COVID vaccine in? Yeah. 
and we still have a few spots available this week. Would you like to make an appointment to come in and receive it? In Germany, I have found that Germans have a tendency to just directly answer the question you ask, but offer no other information up unless you follow up and ask more questions about it. I guess I could make an argument that they don't want to assume they know what you are leading to when you start asking questions, but at the same time, there are so many times where it is obvious where a conversation is going, but it can be like an interrogation just to get any information out and you have to know exactly what questions to ask, otherwise they won't offer any other information up to you. I just feel so much conversations could be much quicker and more streamlined if they didn't do this and for this reason, I just don't understand why they do this. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is... What's the best memory you have? Thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and we will see you in our next video. Are not allowed from Maundy... Th Public dance events are not allowed from Maundy Thursdays that from 0, 4 a.m. to Easter Sunday at 1600. Maundy Thursday at zero in the Maundy Thursday in four in the at four in the morning to Easter Sunday until